why you should abandon false shepherds and turn to the great shepherd. Part 13, the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, Day 149. Somebody ought to say amen right there. Let's all stand for the reading of God's holy word. Turn in your Bibles to John chapter 10, verse 22. The Bible reads, And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. I told you yesterday that's a writer's dream when they see something like that. And they can make a novel out of that that has spiritual uh, applications. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long doest thou make us to doubt, Jesus? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly, Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And I give unto them eternal life. Everybody say that. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. They shall never go to hell. And they shall never go to the lake of fire. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. That includes the devil. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your promises in your holy word. Help us to believe them. Help lost people to believe them. Help save people to believe them. And forgive us of our sin of unbelief. And Lord, we pray tonight that you would uh, crush and crucify our flesh for this moment. Help us to die to self in a very real sense. And fill us with the anointing, the unction, and the bow of your Holy Spirit to make your holy gospel plain. And we pray that you would open blinded eyes and unstop deaf ears and save those who are lost. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the late, and he would be offended, he would be offended if we called him great. He was not about that. But the late Adrian Rogers said, I believe that a great number of people are going to die and go to hell because they're counting on their religiosity in the church instead of their relationship with Jesus to get them to heaven. They give lip service to repentance and faith, but they've never been born again. My, my, my. Ladies and gentlemen, although Jesus avoided referring to himself uh, oftentimes as the Messiah or as the King of the Jews, there were many times when he gave the Jews enough reason to believe in him and believe on him. Amen, somebody. Amen. If you have been paying attention to these messages, you know that to be true. His actions and his words were a huge mountain of evidence accumulating accumulating that should have led to belief and faith in him as the son of god as the savior of the world but for those religious jews it didn't matter 
Thus he says, I told you, and ye believed not. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a quick little journey backwards. What were some of the things that Jesus had told them that pointed to him being what he said he was, the Son of God? Up until this point in the Gospel of John, Jesus had said the following. Number one, he said, I am the one who came down from heaven. Number two, he said, whoever believes in me hath eternal life. Number three, he said, I am the only begotten Son of God. That's a clue. Amen, somebody. He said, The Father hath committed all judgment unto the Son. He said, All should honor me just as they honor God the Father. That's another clue. He said, Ladies and gentlemen, in the Hebrew scriptures, all speak of me. He said, I always please God and never sin. He said, before Abraham was, I am, that's another clue, particularly for the Jews. He said, I have the power to lay down my life and the power to take it up again. That's a clue. He said, I am the bread of life. He said, I am the light of the world. He said, I am the door. He said, I am the good shepherd. Amen, somebody. So ladies and gentlemen, the Jews had heard all of these wonderful things from Jesus the Christ, sometimes more than once. Yet they still refused to believe in him as the Son of God. With these words and Jesus' spectacular miracles, one is led to ask, what more does Jesus have to do? He has told them who he is. He has shown them who he is. Now Jesus says, but ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. In other words, if you were my sheep, you would believe in me. You would not have any doubts. Jesus is not saying that uh, these people are unable to believe or that they are doomed to continue in their unbelief. He is simply pointing out that because they do not listen to him, they're not paying attention to what he's saying, and they don't obey his words, they are classified as those that believe not. Unlike those who believe and strive to obey, they are not a part of Jesus' flock. Jesus had previously condemned them as false shepherds, false prophets, liars, and blind guides leading the blind, people who led others astray. Now he condemns them as false sheep, people unwilling to believe and obey despite the evidence that has been so clearly presented to them. A dear friend, do you believe the evidence of the Word of God? Do you believe what Jesus said about himself? If you do not yet believe in Jesus Christ, dear friend, wherever you are in the world, you too will face the awful temptation of remaining prideful and stubborn and rebellious in your unbelief. It is always easier to stay on the road that you are on than it is to make a decision for Christ. But the sad thing about that is the road you're on leads to hell. You say, well, preacher, I am sincere. You can be sincerely wrong. The book of Proverbs points that out. The book of Wisdom tells us that you can be going down the road but going down the wrong road and be sincere. Sincerely on your way to hell. So therefore, beloved, you must make a decision for Christ if you are to experience 
salvation and the blessings of being a member of his flock. Don't wait, don't hesitate to make that decision. Because tomorrow is not promised to you. Just several hours ago, a prominent basketball player, probably a millionaire, in the streets of New Orleans, 23 years old, at the beginning of his career, somehow has been killed. A man uh, at a TI concert started shooting and uh, as far as we know, one person has been killed. They were there to party and have a good time and now they're dead and they're planning a funeral. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Some dear folks were flying from Paris down to Egypt. They had great expectations. But they're at the bottom of the sea as I speak. Tomorrow is not promised you. Today, the Bible says, is the day of salvation. So believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God like he said. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again, and he will save your soul. Pray and ask him to save your soul. For the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus Christ himself said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Just believe in Christ, dear friend. Don't be like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Don't be like the false shepherds. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that the Holy Spirit is calling you. God's Holy Word is calling you. And you can be saved tonight. If there's a conviction in your heart right where you are, wherever you are. If there's a pull to Christ, follow that pull. And pray with me right now, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. For if that belief is in your heart, it will come out as a confession from your mouth, the Bible tells us. Repeat after me phrase by phrase. Holy Father God. <clears throat> I pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I acknowledge that I am a wicked sinner like everybody else in the world. For Jesus Christ's sake, forgive me of my sins, knowing that I deserve hell for each and every one of them. As I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to repent and turn away from my sins in my old life and to follow you in the new life by the power of your Holy Spirit and your Holy Word. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again, and you prayed that prayer with me, you meant it from your heart, you are now born again, you are now saved and on your way to heaven. It is as simple as that. I know it's hard to believe, but why would God make it hard for such wicked people as we are? Congratulations on trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. For more information to help you grow, in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture.